Hey everybody, welcome back. I got another exciting Talking Points episode for you today. Now if you've been following our social media, you'll know that I actually made it over to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. And uh, while I was there, I had a chance to explore the land, go on the new Millennium Falcon and Smuggler's Run ride, and build a lightsaber. And uh, I thought today would be a great time to show you what that lightsaber is all about. Now over on my own YouTube channel, you can find the entire experience. I strapped a GoPro to my chest and uh, recorded the whole thing. And uh, while I'm showing you a few snippets here, you can see the entire thing over on that channel. So when you show up, you get in line, you make your reservation, and then at that time you pick one of four options for your lightsaber. Peace and Justice, which is your typical uh, Jedi motif. Power and Control, which is a bit more like the Sith. Uh, protection and Defense, uh, they describe it to me as more Old Republic style lightsabers, as well as Elemental Nature, which is kind of combining things like a Rancor Teeth or Bilark Tree components into it. Myself, I chose the Peace and Justice, and when you do that and you pay for your lightsaber, they give you a special Disney pin. Uh, now, as part of the story, you actually have to wear this on you when you go into the show and you're supposed to have it on you at all times. The pins are obviously different for each option you pick and that's how they know in the shop which lightsaber components to give you during the actual show itself. And make note of the mistake, it actually is a show. There are lighting and sound cues, there's a whole speech you, you hear, and building your components is just a portion of that. Now the lightsabers are not cheap. It was $215.49 with tax without an annual pass discount. They do not offer them when you build the lightsabers, so plan on spending that no matter what pass you got into the park with. Uh, but it is actually pretty great. It's very much a force effects quality lightsaber, metal components. Uh, my grip even has some rubberized bits. There's motion sensing when you move this, the lightsaber around. Uh, there's a removable kyber crystal in there. It, you can change the kyber crystal out, it will change the color of your blade. And it's actually very well put together and I did not feel ripped off at all. Now I'm sure you're curious to see how the lightsaber is put together and I am more than happy to show you. First off we start with this piece. This is called the chassis. Everybody guess this uh, when you start. That's the end of the blade goes in. This is the part with the speaker and also the battery component. It just kind of slots in the back there. Give it a little twist to hold it together. And uh, you can see here's a chamber for the kyber crystal. Uh, the top has a little spring loaded push into it so you can uh, fit it in there snugly. And you get your choice in the shop of red, blue, green, or purple kyber crystals. Uh, you can additionally purchase yellow, white, and if you're lucky, there's also a hidden black one to, buy, to get. Uh, I only have one kyber crystal right now, the one I got in the shop, but I do plan to get more. But I chose blue because, you know, my favorite color. So we slot it in. Yeah, yeah, it recognizes and we'll start lighting up with the crystal. The crystal itself is lit up, if you can see that. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of see it around there. I'm not sure if it's showing up in camera. Uh, next thing you add is the, uh, the switch to turn it on. This is uh, the part that only goes around half of it. You get another half for the back side. This is the actual switch itself. And you can see all that seems to do is push that up and down. And yet that seems to be enough. You can see there's no real electrical connections, and uh, yet when you add the blade in, I'm not quite sure how this works <laughs> because, like I said, there's no actual connection there. I've been told maybe there's a magnet, uh, maybe it's like wireless t charging technology, I don't know. And part of that actually kind of thrills me. There we are. So you 
add your trigger on. You get a little red square here to match with the red square there. And then the back side, you've got your blue square to match with the blue square on this part. So that's how you orient the switch portion. And then you add your grips. Uh, now, I should mention that every part in the shop, you get a choice of two selections for each. There's two switches, there's two emitters, two uh, hilts, but there's technically four grips because these parts, the grips are interchangeable. You only get to keep one set, but uh, these are the two I chose. And I like to put this one with the longer stripes on the bottom. Always make sure you're orienting properly. And uh, then you put the other one up top. Now you can see it doesn't quite uh, line up properly evenly where these little studs are evenly on each side. So I just kind of leave it slightly loose. It's, uh, it works. Uh, add an emitter to it. I chose this one. Kind of reminded me of uh, Luke's slash Anakin slash Ray's. <laughs> that lines up with the trigger nicely. And then for the hilt, you can see I got one with an old style loop. They do have a few with the newer ring styles that were pre featured in the prequels. But, uh, let me just screw that on right there. <laughs> Make sure I'm screwing it on properly. And that was my lightsaber. Yeah, without the blade in, it sort of was like it can't quite reach that point, which I kind of like that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how I orient it. So the lightsaber blade itself is this sort of white plastic tube about a yard long. It's got LEDs down the length of it and it ends in this black plastic connector. Uh, you can see one pin is a little bit larger than the other. There's a little sticker there to begin with so that when they connected it in the storyline the uh, cast members knew which side was up. <laughs> and so you just line up the grooves in the hilt. Give it a little twist to lock it in place and then you're good to go. And that is how you put together a lightsaber. But the lightsaber wasn't the only thing I managed to build at Galaxy's Edge. For $107.74, no annual pass discount but with tax, I managed to sneak into the Droid Depot 20 minutes before park closing and build myself an R2 unit. And yes, they did give you this little box to take him home with because otherwise you have to carry around a robot your entire time. <laughs> Who wants to do that? I also got some extra components for this droid and uh, I'm sure you're curious how those work out and I'll show you right now. And here's the little R3 I built at the Droid Depot. Uh, I don't have a full name for him yet. I don't really know this designation. I just call him R3. And uh, you can tell he's an R3 because of the clear dome. Uh, they also make R2s, R4s, and R5s available. So that's all just the dome shape that determines that if you're a Star Wars nerd. Uh, Scale-wise, he's uh, not terribly large. You can see that's him next to the interactive R2-D2 that Hasbro put out a few times starting with Revenge of the Sith. And the uh, little white thing in front of him, that's his remote control. Now you do have to manually move the legs back yourself, uh, and the middle leg is not removable. You can sort of force it out, but I worry you're going to break something eventually if you keep doing that. Now both the R-series and B-series come with this remote control, and uh, they kind of pair over Bluetooth, I believe. Now you can see some of the buttons. This one rotates the dome side to side. This is the button that activates the, the noises of its 
speaking, I guess. So kind of a random assortment of R2-D2-like sounds. Uh, the buttons on the bottom here rotate side to side. And then we have a front to back. Uh, as you can see, I've got it on a plastic mat here. Uh, R2 has a little trouble moving around on carpet, but I think that's kind of typical for some RC toys. For $13, you can purchase a personality chip. Uh, they are available in three different personalities, uh, Resistance, First Order, or I believe Scoundrel. Uh, I chose Scoundrel because of those three personalities, each personality is available in two colors, and I wanted the silver. I really wanted the Resistance blue chip, but that was sold out when I was getting it. So, here is the chip. And both R and B series droids can take a personality chip. So while they all sort of default to sounding like R2-D2, when you add in said chip and press the button on the remote, It really does affect how your droid sounds afterwards. Now with a B-series droid, the personality chip is all the customization you can do. That's another one of the reasons why I kind of like the R-series more. Uh, every one of the panels, this long one, this long one, this little square, and these two, can be replaced on your R-series droid. They sell panel kits that you can just swap out. Uh, and additionally, there's also a set of decals in those same shapes. I'm not sure if they're supposed to go over the existing ones or what. I haven't purchased those. But what I did purchase was this tool kit. For 13 bucks, you get a set of six tools, including R2's little zapper thingy from Return of the Jedi, uh, his data port connection, a claw, a buzzsaw, and two other smaller toys. And they plug into your droid like so. Now obviously you have to uh, manually plug them in every time, but it's nice to have the option of adding those in. Now if you're willing to pay a little bit more, for $18 you can purchase these blaster attachments. And these blaster attachments use the otherwise unused button on this broke control. I'm assuming the higher prices due to the electronics built into the blasters. Also for $18 you can buy jet attachments that replicate the rocket boosters that R2 had in episode 2. These also use the same button on the remote. So it's nice to have a few different options for modifying your droid. Now curiously, despite all the other panels having a reason for their removability, I found that on the inside of the legs there is this part that comes off, and I'm not quite sure why that is. I don't see anything in there that you can mount a new piece to, and I don't think those parts are included in the uh, customization packs. So it's a little curious why they're there. Maybe it's a future edition? So there we are. That's the droid and lightsaber build so you can get at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Uh, what did you think? Is it worth the price to you? Is it something you'd want to put together? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of Articulated Points. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'd appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more about some of the toys featured in this episode or want to follow us on social media, links are in the description below this video.